Mr. Pritam Singh. A Bloomberg article late last year put it aptly. Singapore's reputation as one of the world's most expensive cities now extends to one of its cheapest modes of transportation, motorcycles. Many Singaporeans who earn wages at the lower deciles rely on motorcycles for transport, gig work or undertaking deliveries. In March last year, LTA attempted to arrest high COE prices by increasing the deposit for motorcycle COEs and halving their validity period from six months to three months. These moves did not arrest the rise in motor motorbike COEs, which rose to more than $13,000 in November last year. Clearly, more needs to be done. In response to last year's changes, the Motorcycle Trade Association suggested raising the COE bid deposit to $2,000 and reducing the COE validity period to one month. Can the Ministry share if it has looked at this to further manage motorcycle COE premiums? Secondly, in years past, LTA had transferred motorcycle COEs to the open category. At one point, the number of motorcycle COEs transferred to the open category was up to 25 per cent before being reduced to 10 per cent. This practice was ended around 2017. Would the government consider redesignating some open category COEs to motorcycle COEs for reasons of equity and fairness for our low income Singaporeans and, of course, the gig economy landscape? Thirdly, an important but seldom discussed aspect of high motorcycle COE prices revolves around the largely unregulated motorcycle financing ecosystem. The fact here is that it is the motorcycle traders and sellers that overwhelming, overwhelmingly offer in house financing. In some cases, the interest-bearing component of such loans can be oppressive for our motorcyclists. High COE prices mean motorcyclists will require more financing to buy motorcycles. There have been concerns expressed about how the prospect of offering, offering such financing in and of itself provides an opportunity to profit from financing, even if a motorcycle is prematurely returned before the loan is fully settled, since the unused portion of the COE can be redeemed. Do high COE prices for motorcycles create a perverse incentive for some motorcycle financiers to drive up motorcycle COE prices in a largely unregulated space. Would MOT look at motorcycle finance as an area of deep study and review to ensure that motorcycle riders, almost 70 per cent of whom ride Class 2B motorcycles and who, and who are more than likely earning well below the median income, are not unfairly penalised because of a lack of government regulation?